Hello. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different than our normal fun adventure videos with the animals. Uh, today I wanted to do something kind of like a little informative video. Um, we do a lot of camping with the two dogs and the four ferrets. And anytime I post stuff online about us hiking or camping with them, I get a lot of questions. Um, usually asking what do we bring for them, how do we do it. Um, we get a lot of questions in person when people walk by the campsites and notice we have them. Um, and I even get people who want to see the inside of the camper just to see how we keep them, what do we bring for them, and things like that. Um, so I figured I'd do a little video and a little tour of what we have outside and inside for both the dogs and the ferrets. Um, so that way if you're ever thinking about taking your dogs or ferrets camping, you kind of have an idea of what you might need to bring. So at first glance, we have your normal camping setup. Two chairs, little table, fire pit, picnic table, spectacular view. But what usually gets people stopping to ask us questions is this monstrosity. Yes, we set this up every camping trip. Um, I'm actually gonna do a separate video because I get a lot of questions on what brand fencing it is, how do we make a door, because this actually does not come with a people-sized door, um, and how we keep the dogs out from underneath the trailer. This is where we spend most of our time, hanging out in here with the dogs and the ferrets. We have our two comfier chairs, their little table in here. And this is the ferrets outside enclosure. Um, if we're outside and weather is permitting, this is usually where they're at. Um, in between this and taking them on a lot of walks, um, this is how we get them a little bit more exercise because they have a little more room in here than the cage on the inside. Um, this is actually a rabbit hutch that we got online but we use it for them. I have a hammock, food dish, water dish. They have their litter box underneath there. This closes. And this side, they have another hammock. Bucket full of toys, which usually is not all in the bucket. I just cleaned it up. And we keep plexiglass on the bottom because ferrets are diggers. Um, we didn't want them ruining the mat because they would just burrow a hole through the mat and probably underneath into the dirt outside that fence. They are tenacious. So if we're outside, this is where they get to chill at if it's not too hot. Um, ferrets are more prone to overheating than being cold. Um, right now it's a little chilly outside. I'm in a light jacket. Um, this would actually be perfect temperature for them. Um, but if it's too hot, they stay indoors with the air conditioning. Um, they actually have their own little fan over here. Um, also outside for the dogs, I have this little trunk that Fred got me because I have a lot of animal stuff. Um, I hide it underneath there so it's kind of out of sight. Um, but I keep both of their life jackets in here. I have special leashes for when we go on the river. Um, I keep extra uh, tie outs and those things. So sometimes like if we are at the fire pit and we want them out there, I can still tie them up out there so they're not left behind in here. Uh, those harnesses are for when we go in the boat with their life jackets, and that's uh, ferret litter bedding. All the extra stuff gets kept in here, and this is just out of sight. Um, outside I have for them this thing here. All that is is a tension rod with just a normal curtain on it. Um, we almost always keep our door open. Um, the dogs are almost always outside but I like to have the ability for them to be able to go in and out whenever they want to. Um, if it's hot outside, we have the air running on the inside at all times, and if it's cold outside, we have the heat running. So if the dogs are too hot or too cold in here, they can go in there if they want, but I don't want all the heat or AC escaping either, so this is kind of a happy medium. Obviously, some still escapes, um, but the dogs can kind of push aside and go in whenever they want. So now for the tour of the inside. <laughs> Oh, it's Winky going totally crazy. Um, anytime the ferrets are loose in here, um, I can't leave the curtain up because um, they also know how to get in and out if the curtain's just up and I don't need them free roaming outside. So anytime they're out, the door's shut. And right now they're getting some playtime. So normally speaking, most of the time we try to keep the ferrets outside as much as possible um, if the weather's permitting. Uh, if they're not currently on a hike with us or going for a walk, on their harness and leashes. Um, they'll be hanging out in that little hutch outside with us. Uh, if it starts to get too hot outside, since they can overheat easily, they have to come inside. And depending on what's going on, we try to give them much more free roam time. 
Um, they're used to a very big cage at home in free room, lots of free room time. Uh, they have two double unit ferret nations connected. So they have like six foot by three foot, I don't know, by like five feet high cage space on top of free room time anytime we're home. So they're used to lots of room to play. Did you find the bottle I gave you? <laughs> um, when they aren't free roaming in here and can't be outside because of the weather, this is where they stay. And normally I would totally agree with anybody who's going to say that this cage is way too small for one ferret, let alone four. Um, I definitely agree. Um, but they don't spend very much time in there at all except for basically sleeping time. Um, it's a single layer, basically a rabbit cage. It's got a plastic bottom. Um, I have litter down there so if they do go to the bathroom um, while sleeping. And they got two hammocks. Um, I don't know why I put two hammocks in there because... All four of them always pile into the same one anyways. And someone's being a stinkhead back there, I think. Who's being a stinkhead? Dobby. Dobby, you're a stinkhead. Um, they have food and water in there at all times. Um, but again, they're not in there very often. Basically, they're to sleep. <laughs> we try to burn as much energy as possible. So that way they are wore out when they have to come in. And that way I don't have to worry about them being cramped and wanting to roam. As you can see... It's a hard sleepy time for those two. They've been out for most of the day. Normally speaking, they have a lot more free room area space. Um, I have this up here just because they were making mischief and while I'm making my video, I couldn't monitor them right now. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, so right now I just gave them a little less space than I normally would, but they've been out all day. Like I said, they're basically ready to sleep anyways. Um, sometimes I'll put the gate up to keep them out of the bedroom. It'll go there, um, but not always. Right, Stinkies? Hey, Stinky. <laughs> so besides the cage, um, obviously you need to pack food. Um, I've always found it's better to pack way, way more than less. Um, ferrets can be very finicky about their food, and if you run out of food when you're somewhere else and can't get the food, you could end up in a lot of trouble with a ferret that's not going to eat. Um, from what I've read, it's called imprinting on the food, what they do, and... If you can't get the same food they're used to, they just might not eat and will starve themselves. Uh, we were camping about four or five hours away from where, uh, from home. Um, I actually, just for fun, I went to some of the local pet stores and places nearby to see if I could find their normal food in case we were to run out. And they definitely do not have what they're used to eating. So always pack extra, extra, extra. Um, I have all of their food and the dog food here. Um, normally speaking, one or two will be ferret food and four the dog food because obviously they go through a lot more. Um, I try to bring twice the amount of food that I think they would normally eat at home just in case something does happen or they end up eating more. Um, we only have one day left here so we're okay. They each have scoopers in there and that way all the food's kind of all together. So besides a safe place to keep them and plenty of food, I would also make sure you bring water. Um, our camper actually will hold water. Um, we usually fill it up at home, but not all the time. Like this time, we actually filled it up at the campground. Um, I don't usually like feeding any of the animals uh, water from anywhere else. I don't want to upset their stomachs. Oh, you are psycho. <laughs> so, usually speaking, I always bring tons of bottled water for them and the dogs. Uh, besides water, ferrets love toys. So, like, I have all their toys in their outside area because... Usually speaking, in the inside cage, they're just sleeping in. Um, and they have plenty to explore in here that they don't usually play with the toys, and I do bring them out down uh, inside. Um, they, I always bring their harnesses, which... They're, oh, sleepy head. My guy's harnesses have a bell, their name. On the back has my uh, phone number and information in case they do get lost. Um, now, ferrets tend to be escape artists, so if they do get lost there's a good chance they're going to lose their harness anyways. So all four of my guys are microchipped as well. Um, so in case somebody does find them, hopefully we can get them back that way. But I always try to be very, very careful that no chances happen of them getting out because ferrets are probably a lot harder to find than a lost dog. Okay, they're so little and fast. Hmm? So that's all we really take with them for camping with them in an RV. Um, food, water, safe place to keep them, toys, their leashes, harnesses, 
and uh, litter and I, I always bring their baby wipes as well because when I clean their cage I like to use baby wipes. Now for the dogs I have their own set of stuff as well. Um, again their food's up there with the ferret food. I keep treats here. Underneath here is all the other extra doggy stuff. Um, I've got a basket full of toys, I've got a basket of bones, and uh, deer antlers, tons of poop bags. You can never have enough poop bags when hiking or camping with your dogs. Uh, more treats. This is actually the ferrets uh, baby wipes from when I clean their cage, um, as well as a scooper for their litter. Um, down here I have like their 25 or 30 foot training lines that we sometimes use for fun. Uh, I have their light up collars for nighttime. Um, their rough wear harnesses for hikings here. I got their extra hiking leashes that are longer that are hands-free and their 10-foot leashes are down there as well. And there's probably some other things shoved underneath there. That's kind of like the dog cabinet. I also have hanging here leashes as well. Um, these are kind of my go-to leashes for if we're just taking them out to the bathroom real quick because even though they have grassy area there, um, I've tried to teach them they still should not be potting out there because I don't need them accidentally potting on the mat. Um, so I keep shorter leashes here. I think these are like four foot. Um, they hang there so it's easy. I have more poop bags here for convenience. In the bedroom, the only pet thing in here is basically one small dog bed. Uh, Jezebel always sleeps on our little couch thing out here. Celine normally starts out in bed with us. Um, I don't know if it's because she gets too hot or if it's just crowded or maybe one of us are kicking. She'll move to the floor and she always moved to this little section down here. So I just got this small little dog bed thing for her. Give her a little comfortable thing so she's not laying on the ground. They always have two water bowls underneath there. Not that we're focusing very good. Um, I keep those filled at all times. Um, we also have water outside for them. Because again, a lot of the times they're outside with us. I have two water buckets out there that I keep water in. So that way they don't have to come inside if they don't want to for water. The biggest thing you'll notice, a lot of the stuff I actually have in here stays in here all the time. Um, like the water bowl dishes underneath there. Some of the leashes that we have. Um, I have dishes that are actually in the sink right now that were being washed. They stay in here all the time. So every time we go camping, I don't have to worry about 5 million things to pack. I know it's already in the camper. It makes for, I don't know, camp camping, the only stressful about camping is usually packing for me, probably because I overpack. Um, having a lot of the extra stuff in here so I don't have to worry about missing things, it just takes a lot of the stress away for me. So like I mentioned, um, I love slow feed bowls. They have slow feed bowls at home. Um, these are actually smaller versions of the ones they have. Um, it still fits enough food for them. Um, they were kind of slobbery, so they got washed and they're drying right now. Uh, that's their water bottles from when we go hiking that are just kind of being rinsed out. Um, and underneath one of these drawers, I also have these dishes for them. Um, if they're getting like an actual meal of meat or something like that, I really don't like cleaning nasty stuff out of those. Um, that's strictly for kibble. Um, these ones are here for any kind of food that we cook for them or something like that. Uh, this is here. Uh, for, from the ferrets free room, they like to get into my bathroom because they can actually get underneath that itty bitty little hole. And when they get into my bathroom, they like to tear up all of my toilet paper, which is not fun. So when ferrets are free roaming, all this is is another tension rod I put across the thing and it keeps them from going underneath. And if they're not free roaming, when they go to go to their cage, the same tension rod I just make a little bigger and I actually shove it underneath there because they like, well I shouldn't say they, mainly Winky likes to scratch at this and this at night sometimes is the most obnoxious of things. Uh, plus I don't want it ruined so you can see already some of the threads coming out here. So that pushes it away far enough so I don't have to worry about them ruining it or keeping me up at night. The only other thing we keep in here for the dogs is their tag or I think it's called whistle now uh, chargers. Uh, both dogs have GPS devices on their collars. Um, this charges them. Um, they go dead. Usually it takes about a week, sometimes a little more, until they go dead. And the closer the dogs are to these, they actually go into a power saver mode and they don't go as dead as fast. Um, so I, I need to bring these with me to charge. Plus, uh, they're supposed to let me know when they leave their, like, I don't know, whatever zone I put on the map. So if they leave it and get loose... 
Um, it texts our phone and emails us to let us know that they're loose. Um, and so if I leave that at my house, they're definitely out of their zone. So that comes with us every trip as well. Besides the dog's GPS devices and their collars, the other really important device that we have for the pets is our temperature monitoring device. Uh, the dog's actual GPS devices originally were supposed to have the capability to monitor temperature. Um, the packaging actually said it. Um, the company actually got bought out by another company and for some reason uh, it never actually happened. So we bought this secondary device. Uh, the brand is Nimble. Uh, basically, it monitors the ambient temperature in the area. Um, the ferrets are more prone to overheating than the dog, so I do have this closest to the ferret cage. But obviously, if this part of the RV is too hot, all of the RV is going to be too hot. Um, you set the parameters. So if you want the parameters to be like 75 to 80 degrees, if it gets colder than the 75 degrees or hotter than the 80 degrees, uh, it sends a text message to your phone. Uh, we've used it a lot. So far, it's worked perfectly. Uh, we played around with the range of temperatures uh, just to make sure it did work. Um, my recommendation is if you do use something like this, um, keep the temperature range um, something kind of minimal. On one hand, it's kind of annoying because you might get texts when there isn't really an issue, but if you happen to have to leave your pet behind and you're away for the day, um, you know, if you're 30 minutes away and you have this set to be at 85 degrees, by the time you get back, it might already be hot. So if you set it, you know, at 78 degrees, you know, you know you still have some time to get back if something happens, like your generator goes out or for some reason you lose the short power. But I would recommend this whether you're in a tent or if you are in an RV. Now obviously if you are boondocking and have no access to electricity, this is not going to work for you, unfortunately. So as everything I can think of right now for what we bring to be able to camp with our two dogs and four ferrets. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I absolutely love answering questions uh, when it comes to camping with your animals, um, as well as any questions regarding animals. Um, our motto is live life with your pets. Uh, we're very big into doing as much possible with your pets, not just leaving them at home. So any questions that we can answer or help you with that might be able to allow you to bring your animals on an adventure or camping or anything else, we would absolutely love to help you with that. Um, if you already camp with your dogs or other animals and you have some advice for us, um, we would love to hear it as well. Um, by no means did we start any of these great ideas on our own. Um, the exercise pens, for example, was not our idea. I can't remember if we saw them in person or if we saw them online or something. Um, but we basically just took it, uh, made it a little better, more appropriate for us. Um, so again, we love advice. Anything that can make things better for our pets as well. Uh, thank you for watching this video today. Get out and have some fun with your pets.